just a surreal experience to, uh, well, for me personally, to win and go out as a senior uh, with that NorCal championship. Um, but it was an atmosphere like nothing I've ever experienced. Deep rooted in the mind of every high school football player is a chance to play for a state championship. Those dreams for the 2013 Enterprise High School football team became reality. It was never easy for the Hornets, from doubters to injuries to playing the waiting game just to be selected for a state regional bowl game weighed on them. But it made the triumph of hoisting a Northern California championship that much sweeter. With that accomplishment, Enterprise rallied not only Redding and the surrounding communities, but a region in NorCal that is often disrespected by the rest of the state. NorCal's was something that you don't get to experience very often. It was fans right on top of you, probably 15, 15 feet from your sideline to their stands. And uh, we came in pretty, uh, it's pretty adverse situation, you know. Uh, they jumped on top of us and their crowd really from the very beginning was pretty rowdy until the very, huh, obviously the very end. Uh, and it was just, I remember at one point in the game, just looking up at their stands and the whole stadium was full, probably anywhere from five to 10,000 people strong. Enterprise was tested from the start, opening the year against Oakdale, the reigning NorCal champion. The Hornets pulled out a nail-biting 23-22 win by denying a two-point conversion in the game's final minute. You know, week one, you know, we, we kind of struggled. We had some injuries down in Oakdale. Um, they're, a, they're a very good football team and, and a quality program down there and have a, have a history of winning, especially at their place. Um, and, you know, we got tested right away. We had a couple injuries and then uh, had to hang on and win that game on a goal line stand. And, and from there, I think it really helped us with, uh, with confidence. The next week, Enterprise was an underdog for a monumental homecoming matchup with West Valley. But the Hornets put the region on notice with a 28-3 thrashing in what was supposed to be the game of the year in the northern section. I think that it's relevant to everybody that we were fearless going to that game, considering the fact we knew the game was going to be and we scheduled them for homecoming. And the fact that it was homecoming, the fact that we were supposed to lose that game, the fact that everything on all the odds were against us, it just gave us motivation to go out and do what we did. Like even when we got down at the beginning, <laughs> we still fought our way back through it. Well, yeah, I think uh, those games were set up because we immediately wanted to make a statement. I mean, we knew we had a special team from the start. From there, the Hornets rolled over every opponent. Behind the hard-running style of Izzy Matthews, a dominant offensive line, and run-stuffing defense, they scored at least 40 points for the next 10 games, a northern section record. Along the way, Enterprise put up 50 first-half points while blasting crosstown rival Shasta in the River Bowl, proving the dominance it has in the battle for Reading. Other wins included handing Paradise, a perennial power, its worst loss in 10 years, and then beating the Bobcats again a month later to be the first team in school history to win back-to-back -back section championships. This belongs to you! Yeah! Enterprise, those undefeated at 12-0, had a week in limbo to wait and see if it would be selected for a state regional bowl game. It was interesting the way coach handled it was really well, you know. We prepared for, actually it was we prepared to cross the Grande because we weren't expecting that kind of upset to happen. But, you know, we had a full practice, we had half a practice, and then we went bowling, I guess. So going bowling, going bowling, kind of that kind of thing. I'm not the best at that though. On Sunday, December 8th, as the last remaining unbeaten team in Division II, Enterprise received an invitation to play Manteca for a NorCal championship. Well, there were a lot of things that had to go our way, um, and, and they did. You know, it looked like, you know, there were games on that Friday and there were games on Saturday. Um, Friday night wasn't very kind to us, the things that happened. Um, but Saturday, you know, the, the teams that we needed to win and lose, you know, it took care of itself and and you know we, we were kind of in the mindset that if we happen to be 12 and 0 and we're section champs you know all the rest of it would be gravy anyway so you know we we were interested and we were you know we you know we wanted that opportunity to play in that in that regional game but we weren't going to be devastated or heartbroken if if that didn't happen when i found out that it was on 
that, that we made it, I immediately back into football mode and a bunch of my teammates are texting me and you know I, at that point it was just on it was like all right you know what we can we can do this we can um, and and then after that it was like look like we're not stopping at Manteca. Manteca and Enterprise were spitting images of one another. They were both big on the lines, fast where it mattered, and loved to run the football. Also both had plenty of support that traveled to the neutral site field in Stockton. It was an incredible venue. We hadn't dealt with noise um, of that level. Uh, we haven't dealt with a crowd. You know, the, the venue lent itself to, you know, it's a beautiful venue for football. The crowd is literally right on top of you. Um, you know, so we, didn't ha we hadn't dealt with that. We played in front of some big crowds and, and a lot of excitement, but we hadn't played in front of anything like that. And, and I was so pleased and so happy that we traveled so many people down. Um, to Stockton to represent our, our school and our community. But by far that venue um, was the most electric venue that we played in, in, in all year long. Um, having the stands right down on the field, um, it, it felt like you were playing in a video game. Although Enterprise was confident as ever, it took a punch early. For the first time in over a year, the Hornets trailed by two touchdowns. Well, you know what, going down 14, it get, you know everybody was kind of looking around a little bit. Um, you know, who's, who's going to be that guy? And, uh, you know, they kicked off, and, and Izzy Perea had a huge um, kickoff return, and that kind of turned the, the tide for us. Um, you know, everybody kind of collectively took a deep breath, and we punched that in, and then we got the next kick, a, a squib kick, bounced it off one of their guys and got the ball back, and I think we went down and scored on that, and, and pretty soon, we, you know, we were right back in it. Um, and once we got it back to, to even, um, you know, the kids' confidence just continued to grow. Enterprise answered quickly, striking with two scores from Izzy Matthews and one from Bobby Lucan before Jay Saravis plunged into the end zone to put the Hornets in position for the win. Antica had a chance to tie it in the fourth quarter, but Alex Laurel fumbled the ball inches from the goal line in a game-changing play, allowing Enterprise to seal a six-point victory. Unlike the week before, the Hornets' future was certain. They'd be playing for a state championship in Los Angeles. We got sent off with a police escort and I was sitting by Justin Omni uh, and we just kind of looked out and we're like, wow, this is the real deal. Um, it was pretty incredible. We got down there and uh, I think the hotel we stayed at was uh, for the North team. So everyone, you're seeing all these football players come in and out and you just talk to them and you get to share like uh, a sense of that North State pride, which is pretty cool. Um, I, you know, you do feel like a little bit of a celebrity, but you gotta realize that it's just a game and in a week or two you're going back to school and you're the same student that you were before you left, you know? For three days, the Hornets ate together, practiced together, and lived together. Anything to prepare them for the biggest game of their lives. They were reminded about their bond as a team that has helped them reach the pinnacle of their season. From the moment they left the hotel, it was business. A silent bus ride and a long walk through the bowels of the stadium to the locker room showed complete focus. They were ready. Enterprise held Chaminade to a field goal on the game's first possession, and Hornet kicker Sheldon Highfield matched it at the first make of his career on a 38-yarder to end the first quarter tied at three. However, it unraveled from there. Chaminade scored through the air, on the ground, and on defense, slewed by 21 at halftime. After the first quarter, I remember looking around at a few of the guys and being like, we can hang, this, hang with this team. You know, we... Uh, we we're moving the ball well. Matthews had what, 185 yards rushing. I mean, our style, uh, their defense was really fast, really quick. Um, so breaking off long runs like Izzy had done all year was kind of a little bit out of the question. But we were still moving the ball. Um, I think you just you can't turn the ball over against a team like that. I mean, you watch it, you see it in the college level, the pros. Those good teams capitalize, and that's exactly what Chaminade did. At that point, I, I just focused on, you know, like, 
uh, for me, like I, I want to enjoy this. And when people, when I saw like my teammates getting kind of down, and I was like, look, like you, you're never gonna do this again. Like just enjoy it. I mean, like it's a part of life, and it's it's a special part of life that very few people get to uh, get to witness. And so it's here. Just just enjoy what's going on. Enjoy the moment. Enterprise wound up losing 41 to nine, scoring in the game's final minute on a touchdown pass from Chase Turner to Justin Abney. It had no effect on the outcome, but gave the Hornets a chance to smile. I didn't know the significance of it until I was on the field, you know? It was just because saying, oh, you're going to state, people are just like, oh, cool, you're going to state. Like, well, it's not a big deal, you know? Um, but we had a lot of supporters, and that really helped us, especially getting down there and then in the game and just knowing that we were playing for something bigger than us. It was, uh, it was a special. It was the fact that no matter what happened through the entire trip, through the entire game, all the way through home to the bus ride, that everyone had each other's backs the entire time. We never got down on each other. It was just that trip really showed the brotherhood that we had. Enterprise became the second team in Northern Section history to play for a state championship. Izzy Matthews broke multiple school rushing records and postseason awards came flooding in for several players. In the end, the Hornets will move on to different futures. Some might become doctors, engineers, or teachers, but they will all have one common experience to look back on that changed the community and their lives forever. Honestly, it still hasn't hit me. Uh, I know that what this team's done is special, but our mentality was just so businesslike that, yeah, it's the state championship, yeah, this is for everything, yeah, we for some of the seniors never get another shot, but I think that we all just, we took it and uh, we just took it as an opportunity. An opportunity to play the game that we love, that we've been playing since we were little. And uh, unfortunately we didn't make the most of that opportunity, but I think that later on down the road, maybe not now, well for some people maybe now, but it'll really hit us the enormity of what we actually accomplished.